Hi, Moral Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain about an American biographical drama film called Hidden Figures. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The film starts with young Catherine walking through the woods and counting numbers. Right next, we see her waiting in the hallway of her school and explaining some geometrical shapes while the principal is talking to her parents. He tells Catherine's parents that she is a genius and there is a school offering her a full scholarship. To prove his point, a teacher dares Catherine to solve a hard equation on the blackboard. Catherine solves the equation successfully and also explains how she did it. The room is speechless. Years later, in 1961, Catherine is all grown up. She and her friends are having some trouble with their car, which is broken down in the middle of the road. Dorothy is trying to fix the problem and tells Catherine and Mary to try and start the engine. Shortly, a police car arrives and the three women warn each other to be careful. They warn Mary to keep her mouth shut and not irritate the police. The policeman steps down of his car and has a bad attitude towards them just because they are black. When he checks their IDs, he realizes that they work for NASA and that makes him friendlier. He even accompanies them to work since they have run late. In the NASA headquarters, the things are pretty tense because the Russians have launched a satellite into outer space. The administrator of NASA tells everybody that the President of the United States demands an immediate response. Further, he is afraid that Russians will soon equip their spaceship with bombs and who knows what else. He tells Harrison to do something about it and do it quickly. Harrison speaks with his assistants and is looking for a person who can handle analytical geometry. They tell him they don't have anyone and they will put out a new request to find someone suitable for the position. Dorothy is sharing today's assignments with a group of colored female workers. She tells Mary that she has been requested by Mr. Zelinsky personally. Mrs. Mitchell walks in the room and asks Dorothy if she has anyone that can handle analytical geometry and Dorothy tells her that Catherine is the one she is looking for. She can handle any numbers you put in front of her. Dorothy asks Mrs. Mitchell about the position of the supervisor and Mitchell replies that it has been informally rejected. Dorothy thinks she does all the work a supervisor does and the position has been vacant for so long. Mitchell tells her she can't do anything to help her. Mary joins Zelinsky and they watch together the testing of a machine which is a part of the spaceship. The testing goes wrong and the machine falls apart. Zelinsky asks Mary what happened and she gets everything right. He tells her that she has an engineer's mind and she should join the training program and become an engineer rather than working in the computers department. Mary says that she is a black woman and is not going to entertain the impossible. Zelinsky asks her if she was white male, would she like to be an engineer? Mary replies yes. Mrs. Mitchell takes Catherine to work with Harrison's team. She warns her that she is the first colored person to work in that department so she better make her proud. Catherine walks in and everyone looks at her like she is a stranger. When Harrison himself walks in and meets her, he tells the secretary to give her some work and also check Paul's math calculations. Catherine takes a seat and Paul passes his work to her. He has an ego and tells her that his numbers are just right. Before she starts, Catherine wants to visit the ladies room and asks the secretary where it is. The secretary tells her that she does not know where her restroom is. She says that because Catherine is black and colored people have a different restroom than the others. Catherine runs to the restroom for the colored and then runs back to her office where more work is waiting for her. Later on, she gets up to use the coffee machine and everybody looks at her weird, like she doesn't have the right to use it. In the end of the day, everyone is left except Catherine and Harrison. Catherine walks into his office to give him her calculations and Harrison tells her to throw it in the trash. He says that he doesn't mean to disrespect her work but those numbers are obsolete. That's how fast things work around there. He also tells her that he needs people that have a vision and can see past the numbers. He asks her if she has that vision and Catherine says yes. Catherine returns home and gets a chance to tell her mother about her new position. Her mother asks her if that's something like a promotion and Catherine says she thinks it is. We also get to see that Catherine has three little daughters. The next day at the church, the pastor talks to the people. He gives praise to some colored people worth mentioning and then says that they have their own black women working in NASA to send men into space. The pastor also introduces Colonel Jim. 
When the people move outside the church, Mary speaks with her husband and he is not very supportive of her. He tells her that she is a black woman and her possibilities of becoming an engineer are thin. Later, Catherine's friends fix her up with Colonel Jim. Their interaction starts on the right foot, but soon things go sideways and Catherine walks away from him. The next day at NASA, Harrison accommodates the arrival of three US Navy pilots. Catherine solves some difficult equations and proves to be smarter than Paul. Harrison notices that and tells everyone to give Catherine access to whatever she needs. Dorothy learns that NASA is building a super machine that will perform millions of calculations in the quickest time possible and she is afraid that she will fall out of work and eventually get fired. Finally, Mitchell tells Mary that she can't apply for the engineer's training program because she lacks the necessary academic education. Jim and Catherine meet again at a house party and Jim apologizes for the other day. The radio ruins the mood when the spokesperson announces that Yuri Gagarin is the first man who went to outer space and he is Russian. That announcement makes Harrison very angry and he thinks that the Russians beat them because they worked harder than NASA. He tells everyone that they are going to work overtime. Meanwhile, Dorothy tells her co-workers that this new calculating machine, IBM, will take them out of work. If they want to have a chance, they have to learn how to program it. The following days, Harrison notices that Catherine is gone for long hours from her desk and confronts her about it when she returns. Catherine yells at him that she has to walk half a mile to go to the bathroom for the colored people. Harrison acts quickly and takes that colored people restroom sign down. He says that everyone pees the same color at NASA. Everybody can use any restroom they want. It's time for NASA to launch its first spaceship and they are successful. Harrison tells his group to go have some rest and they'll get back to work tomorrow. Jim visits Catherine at her house and they have come closer together. They share their first kiss. Mary has successfully requested a hearing with the judge and she tells him that she wants to attend a certain high school because she needs to get that degree in order to be able to apply for the engineering training program. The judge says the high school she wants to attend is an all-white school and the law does not permit colored people in there. Mary has done her research and talks about the importance of being the first. She says that she can't change her skin color, but she would love to be the first black woman to get a degree from an all-white high school. The judge says he will allow her to attend the night classes. Harrison wants to take the next step and send a man to outer space to orbit around planet Earth. Catherine makes the calculations and writes a report. She gives that to Paul, but Paul tells her that the data has changed and she has to do it from the beginning. Catherine tells him that she needs to attend the briefing so she can keep up to date with the data. Paul tells her that she is not allowed to. She does not have clearance for that. Harrison asks what's wrong and Catherine tells him she can't do her job if numbers keep changing all the time and they don't update her. She asks to attend the briefing. Paul once more says she can, but Catherine tells Harrison that he makes the rules around here because he is the boss. He just has to start acting like one. Harrison takes her to the briefing. Everybody asks Harrison if they will be able to bring pilot John Glenn back home safe. Harrison tells Catherine to show them and she writes her calculations on the board. Everyone is impressed. Meanwhile, more manpower is needed at the IBM machine and Mitchell wants to reassign Dorothy there. Dorothy says she is not going unless she takes all the girls with her. The machine will need lots of hands to operate and maintain it. In the end, she and all the girls are reassigned to the IBM machine. In the meantime, Mary's about to start her night classes and her husband is now very supportive. Catherine returns home and she finds a beautiful dinner waiting for her. Her daughters, her mother and Jim sit around the table and Jim proposes to her with his mother's ring. The next day, Catherine has a talk with Harrison and he tells her that they won't be needing her services anymore because all calculations will be operated on the IBM machine from now on. Catherine returns to the computers department and she later marries Jim. As for Dorothy, she gets a promotion and becomes a supervisor. When the time comes for NASA to launch Glenn to orbit the Earth, Harrison realizes that the IBM's today's calculations don't match up with yesterday's calculations. He checks with Paul and it appears to be a problem. Harrison sends one of the guys to get Catherine so she can do the calculations. Catherine does what she has to do and goes to Harrison with the exact numbers. Harrison gives the green light for the launch to happen and they send Glenn to outer space. Glenn starts orbiting the Earth with his ship when suddenly the heat shield starts getting hot. 
NASA receives a warning signal about the heat shield and they try to figure out what's wrong. Glenn's capsule is literally burning and NASA loses communication with him. But soon, communications are back and Glenn is fine. He makes it safely back to Earth. Harrison approaches Catherine and asks her if they can make it to the moon next time and Catherine tells him they are already there. The film ends by presenting the lives of the three main protagonists. Catherine now works permanently in Harrison's group and she has a healthy relationship with Paul. Dorothy is the supervisor at the IBM section and Mary gets her degree and graduates. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn the notifications on so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.